Today we're going to talk about the Asian range. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Hopefully everybody's had a good start to the week. We had some huge moves yesterday on the British pound crosses. Today we're going to be talking about the Asian range. We're going to break things down starting from the beginning of the day. I've received a ton of emails and questions from really the entire process. Understanding the numbers, the box, uh, the high and the low, three pushes, uh, level one, level two, level three, a lot of questions uh, from traders who aren't seeing the bigger picture. And then of course there are some traders who have just knocked it out of the park the last two, three days. We've had some tremendous opportunities. So today we're gonna just talk about the Asian range. We're gonna talk about the three types of M&W formations, how to understand as the day evolves, again to stop thinking like a retail trader in the sense that we don't want to be chasing the moves. There's a bigger organized design in the structure that's setting up and it all boils back down to just understanding some really basic key concepts, peak formations, the timings, um, the previous day's highs and lows, and then 25 to 50 pip increments. Keeping things really simple and just having a bigger perspective, looking at how the market potentially is either dragging traders in the wrong direction for, for the counter trend move to occur, in the direction of the real trend that the smart money, smart money want to move the market, or per perhaps continuing the move with the trend but trapping traders waiting, they're waiting for an opportunity to enter when the market, the, the smart money has already put a peak formation in place and they may not come back against that trend until traders decide finally to chase that move before they're caught in a 25 to 30 or 40 pip stop hunt to only see that market continue in the direction that they initially entered in on before getting stopped out. So. We're gonna go back to just some basic stuff. We're gonna talk about the Asian range, 8 to 11 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. Doesn't matter where you're at in the world, I don't know what time it is where you are, New York Eastern Standard Time. I don't care what time when you Google it says the market's open and everything else, this, this window is when things are gonna happen. That first hour between eight and nine, typically, is the pre-market. Sometimes, as last night, just just by looking at the chart, you could tell that that market was not coming back even before New York opened up. In most of those pairs, the way that they were dragged further, they were 50, 75 pips, but also understanding the geometry. Friday, Monday, massive rectangle. The measured move on that was 100 pips, 25 pip box. Um, so just some simple things. But in New York Eastern Standard Time, that first hour will typically be a trap or a trade. When we're in a massive trend and always in day like that, the market will, in a lot of cases, drag traders that first hour a little bit further, come back a candle, maybe two, and continue that move in the second hour. But traders are un uncertain or unaware that they're getting into the, the trend fearful of a stop hunt going against them once they're in, but uncertain about where to position themselves if they were to enter in into that trend. Golden rule of thumb for myself is whenever the market is in and always in position like that, I will either not trade it or I will wait for a trade in that second hour that comes back against the trend, but it needs to be at numbers. So. 8 to 11 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time, the Asian session begins to trade. Now, depending on what's happened the previous day, yesterday's high, yesterday's low, it might even be New York's high. New York's high, New York's low, because that's the most recent area where we've had peak formations in place. And that's what's important. Could be the previous day's low, the previous day's high, and we could be right in the middle. But What's most important is that we have peak formations on both sides that we're trading inside of when this session comes back into consolidation. Now the next question I would have is, did we make a new high yesterday? Did we make a new low? 
Are we just trading sideways in the trading range? Because if the market is trading inside as Asia begins, we're going to get a high, we're going to get a low. The basic model, as we talked about, when we're inside, we know that depending on where London, near Europe and London open up, if we're, if we're inside of this range, we could be setting up for three sessions and eventually having a buy low setup or a sell high setup in New York <clears throat> to move back down towards the low of the previous day and maybe the low of the week and vice versa in the long direction for the high of the week. We're working the high or we're working the low. If the market extends out at some point and takes out the high in Asia, we now have a low and we have a high. If this market is making new highs and I'm looking for a long signal, I'm expecting a buy low setup off the low of the day to continue that move through the new high of the week. If this market is going to give me a sell high setup, okay, so in the buy low instance, they came back and they worked the low of the day. They worked the low of the day. If I'm looking for a sell high setup, I want to see them working the high of the day. <clears throat> we see traders, they go, they break out to a new high and they give a pullback and traders want to sell that right away and you're selling into a rising trend. If we're gonna, if we're gonna sell, I wanna see something where they're working the low of the day. Sorry, they're, they're, if we're gonna buy. If we're gonna sell, we wanna see that they're working the high of the day. It needs to exhaust itself, put a peak formation in place, and then stop hunt back into it before shifting away. We're not looking to try and catch a falling knife in the middle of a trend. That's what's important to understand. So if Asia gives us a high, we have a high, we have a low. Once they have put the high and the low in place, okay, and they may, they may have extended this out. If they start extending that out, I'm already thinking sell high. If the market has traded and put a peak formation in place in Asia for then at, at no point we may already have the low of the day in place in an existing uptrend but if the market has gone up come back come back inside now we wait for them to start working one side they may come back 25 Europe and London open and they hit it again 25 to 50 pips is typical of a stop hunt now if you think about a really simple concept okay if yesterday was a bull candle and we have a, a high of the day let's say that that was 25 pips roughly from where the close was just approximately the next day opens up Typically, we may get a 25 pip stop hunt or low of the day in place the next day before this market resumes. It might even be 50. But when you do the math, 25 and 25, that's 50 pips from the high. 50 pips. Now, they may come back, put a high in place, and come back down to the low before reversing in the Europe London window for a move back continuing with the trend somewhere in that 25 to 50 maybe 75 pips from the high of the previous day so it's important to think in terms of again the question I always say are they working the high or working the low but when you start to see markets doing this think about what's happening there People chase the trend. The retail market chases the trend. This movement, 25, maybe, maybe more, maybe 50 plus, by the time you get filled, you might be getting 15 to 20 pips. But what this does is it triggers all the technicals to be trending in the downward direction. And what they're doing is they're working back against the trend before reversing the market 
trapping all this volume on the wrong side of the market. When these markets resume their trend, short squeeze, bull squeeze, whatever you want to call them, they move very fast and very aggressively. And there's a reason for that because when they move bar after bar, they're trapping all this volume that's caught in the wrong direction. We're going to look at some examples. We talk about structure. <clears throat> we talk about the high of the day. We talk about timings. We talk about round numbers. We talk about engulfments and pin hammers. We also talk about type 1, type 2, and type 3 M's and W's. If the market is working its way down, okay, you're not going to get an M. You're going to get a W. If the market is working the low and again timings, okay, at some point this market is going to give us our low bear and we're going to get a second leg W at some point. Now we're not talking about a market that's trending and it's already locked in a high or a low of the day with the existing trend or if it's done a reversal, which typically will, in a majority of cases, occur on Friday, okay? If you're going short, you'll probably see them put three peaks in place before Asia, and then they'll resume the market down. There'll be a peak formation from the previous day or from that beginning of Asia, previous day and today. They'll put a peak formation in place work back into it, maybe drop it down and it just falls the rest of the day. They might pull back one or two bars in London and they'll continue to the previous day's low or into the previous peak formation. So we saw some great examples even yesterday. Market did not take out the previous day's low and the reason why that is is that that market moved down 25 pips roughly into the Friday's uh, peak formation low in some cases, a few cases they did, but that's a stop hunt. That's a stop hunt back against a profitable trade. So whenever the market moves to one of these levels, the retail market's chasing the, the indicators give us a trend. They're going back to stop out people who are in the money and they're creating this bigger structure now, bigger structure we talked about, measured moves, measured move, okay? You get a bigger structure, could be 25, it could be 30, maybe 40 pips. If it breaks this, it's going to do another measured move of that distance, maybe two, depending on the, the strength of that move. So if they're working up, they put a high and a low and they start working the high. They break out, traders are chasing the trend, gets up maybe 25, maybe further, but then it starts working the high, okay? We're gonna go at least back to the low of the day. Now, it doesn't mean that the market isn't gonna go back up because we could get a, a move back down to the low of the day, especially it's Tuesday, so we, we're either gonna get a trend day today or they're gonna put a peak formation in place for the move back down inside of the Monday, Tuesday low. Now yesterday was a measured move from a Friday, Monday rectangle on almost every single one of those pairs. Chances are we're gonna see a second day move today for a continuation, which if we've seen a, a, a breakout high or a high and a low established, we might see them hit the high, but I'm looking for a buy low setup with structure to continue that move. Now there's a chance we could see a second day move where they stay in a fairly tight range it breaks out and just keeps going as we head into the Europe London 12 candle window. So structure, Asia, high and low. If we're trading with the trend, we want to be looking for the, if it's an, it's an up day, we want to be looking for the buy low setup. They're going to break it out, get the retail market chasing the, 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 the perceived trend. We're either going to get a one, two, three back into the, into the trend, against the trend, or we're gonna get a high and a low and a W formation in the a end of the Asian window heading into the Europe Open for a measured move continuation of that boom from yesterday's trade. If, if I'm gonna be going long, I'm looking for a buy low setup either off the bottom of the Asian range 
or a stop hunt back against the trend in the Europe London window for a continuation move when, when that market resumes the uptrend. If it was a sell day today, I'd be looking for three peaks or the, them to be working the high, even if they're pulling back against the trend, working the high, working the high, and then a sell off either in New York or at the end of the 12 candle window in the London session. Let's take a look at some trade setups from yesterday. We'll look at the Asian range. Remember, type one, type two, type three. You're gonna be up high for a type one or down low for a type one W. You're gonna be at the high of the day or the low of the day for the type two M or W. And you're gonna be down low for the type three M cell or up high in the Asian range for the type three W buy. Like a cup and handle, type three is like a cup and handle flipped over. But those setups show up almost every single day. And like yesterday on a couple of the pairs, they extended the move into the next day's session without pulling back and consolidating. So we're looking for a peak formation in the Asian session that will give us our initial high or of the day, potentially for a uh, continuation along with the trend. Hopefully you got some value out of today's video traders. Again, thank you for all the great questions. We're gonna look at the Asian range. We're gonna study last few days and just look at the buy lows and the sell high setups. And we're gonna look at today's setups. Keep it simple. Thank you for hitting the like button. Tons of great feedback on the great de debate. And again, if you ha haven't taken advantage of Pepperstone's initial offer <clears throat> for the commission free trading, Check out the link below. They've been very gracious in extending some of those opportunities uh, through traders, even if they're coming from other, other uh, uh, brokers. Um, that's my broker. I've had great success with them. I'm very happy with them. So a ton of people have asked me questions about that. I have no complaints. If you do have any issues, please email me personally. Have a great trading session. Keep it simple. Stick to your trading plan and may the markets go with you. Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. We're continuing our discussion on the Asian range and we're just going to go through some of the different pairs each day just looking at the Asian range and what's happening as it evolves and sets up. We're looking at last week's British Pound and as the session evolves in our three hour window, the market extends out further before pulling back, makes a high breaks that high just prior to our Europe London 12 candle window with a one, two sideways, three engulfment, but also obviously goes towards the high of Friday session, which is also our peak formation high from the US session. So the market's pulled back 25 pips, gone sideways, broken out of a horizontal rectangle before heading back towards the high of the US session, okay? 25 to 50 pips, this is a, a stop hunt back on traders who have shorted the market or, or breaking out long, triggering breakout orders, whatever we want to call it, doesn't matter. But the market pulls back. <clears throat> More importantly, again, the market has gone straight up sideways and gone to the high of the previous New York session. So in this particular case, our Asian range has been extended out before pulling back Hitting the high at the end of our sec uh, first hour, last candle of the first hour, and then London opens up, and there's our M formation at the high of not only the day, but the week. So in this particular case, the market is working higher, working higher, working higher for the sell. They went to the previous day's high, which was also the most recent peak formation. They take out the low of the day, the low of the current day, and they go down pull back and then they start working the low, which was also the peak formation low of the New York session. Now, again, this is an example of where the market doesn't have to take out the low. Why? That's because they're working the low. They're working the low, trapping traders down low before pulling back against the move down. So each time we study these three hour windows, it doesn't matter when they occur. They're all performing the same function. They're going back and forth before they end up working one side and then pulling back and shifting in the opposite direction for a stop hunt or a trend continuation, whatever that may be. 
Typically, we'll have three pushes, one push, two push, three pushes, one push, two push, three pushes, which is why we talk about not trading in the middle unless, of course, you're you're in the right direction, which in some cases, traders can get caught somewhere in here thinking the market's going to continue back to the high. And this is where timings are so important. We get to the end of the 12 candle window and this market has come back 25 pips. Obviously, it's more from high to low, but it's a 25 pip box before engulfing and continuing the, the original sell from up top. <clears throat> But again, we're looking at the Asian session. Market opens up in our 12 candle window. We have a low, we have, sorry, we have a high in place and then we form a peak formation low. The market pulls back towards the low, giving us our peak formation high. Then the market proceeds to auction back up and start working the high of the day before dropping back inside going sideways and continuing that move down. So again, another example of a type 2 M formation set up in Asia. So the market's given us our peak formation. Traders have gone along thinking this is a W. We're in a downtrend. We've taken out the previous day's low. The median price, of course, is the 25.50. So we had our 50 pip box. Market is broken down underneath, giving us our peak formation high, and then with three pushes, gone back up to the high before engulfing, going sideways, and continuing that move down. When the market gets to the low of the 12 candle window before pulling back, you'll notice we have one push, two pushes down, and then the market works back up in three pushes against that swing high on the first leg down. So instead of having a third push down, which this ends up being, we have one push, two push, and then a one, two, three into the trend or against the trend for the final third blow off down, a retest, and there's our W formation, the shortened W. And again, timings, the timings are critical. So I've had some traders email me and say they, they see, uh, they don't see these M's and W's. Okay. And they also don't see three three days of rise or three days of drop. You may not get three days of rise, but you may have three pushes inside of this. You may have a Monday high, a Tuesday low, and you may get a, a, a three levels of rise into that move down. So you have to understand that the smart money isn't going to make it really simple so that it's so obvious every week that everybody figures it out. It is It is a game of cat and mouse. And it is us against them. You're competing against the smartest people in the world, some of the best educated. They're better equipped. They have access to better information. They're extremely competitive. They've probably been trained by the best in the world. And they are there to win this game. So in order to beat them, you either have to stand aside and wait and figure out where your best trade opportunities lie. Like I have two or three setups that I look for. I don't care if the market moves 150 pips. If I don't have a setup on that day, the market can move 200 pips. Uh, if my setup isn't there, I've virtually trained myself now to look for two or three setups, which show up quite a bit over and over again. And I'm prepared to wait for those, but I'm prepared to go into those trades confidently, putting risk on, and knowing that those are the trade setups that I resonate best with. So if you don't see something and it doesn't seem obvious, look for one that looks obvious. I mean, there's 20-some pairs of currencies out there. There's going to be trade setups. There's going to be similar patterns on almost every single pair. They may not move as far. They may move further. But look for the one or two setups that you resonate best with. We go into our next day's session coming off a of peak formation low, that's taken out a peak formation high. So now we're in an up move. The market continues to make new highs as we head into Asia. Gives us a, a peak formation high. When it gets outside of the 12 candle window, takes out the low of Asia. And what does it do? It goes sideways at the low of the day. There's our shortened W. The market heads into the, and if you don't see that, there's the middle structure, second retest, there it is. 
shortened W, bull hammer at the open of the 12 candle window to continue the existing trend from the peak formation low. The first place they're most likely going to go is back towards the peak formation high from Monday. Why is that? Because they've sold it off there and they've bought it down here. And in between, they're going to probably continue to trend unless they put peak formations in and start working one side, which we'll see an example of on the pound yen. The market continues to make new highs. Traders are trying to short this against an uptrend. Market goes back up, hits it again, hits it again, hits it again in the U.S. session 12 candle window before finally taking out the middle structure on an extended M formation. We talked about extended and shortened M's and W's with the type 1, type 2, type 3. <clears throat> if you haven't seen that, go back and check out that video. Uh, middle structure is what gives us our geometry for measured moves. And also, these are the three higher levels of stop losses trapping bull volume or long volume up higher up before shifting the market, hitting the stops, and going into consolidation. Market goes sideways underneath <clears throat> a peak formation. Our peak formations are on the upside. The golden rule of thumb is don't counter trend the peak formation, which means if this peak formation is a sell setup, I'm only looking for sell setups until the market puts a new peak formation low in. If traders wanted to consider the peak formation low to be here, we can see that that gets broken in the Asian session. Once a peak formation is broken, that means they're either working one side or they're now continuing the existing move from the opposite peak formation. Do not counter trend the peak formation. The Asian market makes a new low extending down before consolidating, makes a new low. So we're making new lows in our 12 candle window. The market makes a new low, pulls back, makes a new low, pulls back. We call this working the low. I call this working the low. If the market's working the low, I'm looking for a W formation reversal, a squeeze, uh, a long trade. Market goes sideways before eventually taking out our low bear, breakout pullback. The next most important target is the most recent high of the sessions. So we have lower highs similar to what we saw the higher lows up top. So again, every time there's a swing low or a swing high, we know there's stops, orders, profit taking, whatever you want to call it. There's pending orders sitting above these peaks, same as they were sitting below these peaks on the way up before the market comes back and aggressively goes back towards the high of the day, which again was a peak formation high. The market takes out the peak formation high, stop hunting back up into the peak formation sell signal from the previous day. So again, the Asian range extended down, extended it further in London, New York. So we're taking it further down, which means we're working the low. We'll show an example of a market that has put a peak formation in place. See, the other thing to remember, traders, if you look at this market, there's the low of the week, there's the high of the week. Okay, when this market goes sideways inside, we're in the middle. The only thing you can do when you're in the middle like this is trade with the trend unless it puts peak formations in place. So if it locks in a peak formation, it needs to work that for a sell high or a buy low setup. But when we're in the middle, market has gone down from peak formation gone into consolidation we trade with the trend three pushes down it works the low pulls back inside 50 pips below the asian session after jamming into the peak formation low so they've worked it down into the peak formation low before pulling back there's our, our shortened w again for the move back in the opposite direction Market puts in a peak formation, stop hunting into the peak formation from the previous session. We go into our Asian range. We have a fairly tight consolidation. We have a high. Market makes a new high. Okay, we have a low. As we head into our second three hour window, the market's working the high, working the high, working the high. There's our type 2M structure for the sell. 
Market gets sold into the Europe open, starts working the low. Pulls back one, two, three, goes sideways, dropping down, consolidating into the US session before stop hunting to the low, pulling back, and giving us our W formation. They worked the high for the M formation, then they worked the low for the W formation. Low bear <clears throat> for the right shoulder. The market goes into consolidation. We have two peaks. Market goes into our rollover, working the high, working the high, dropping down in Asia. There's our M structure at the beginning of the session before consolidating. They jamming into the peak formation low from the previous day. Market goes down to the 25 pip increment. Even if you just drew your line across the side, works the low, works the low, works the low one more time before popping up, pin hammer, pin hammers, taking out the middle structure for our buy low W formation, heading into the Europe London session. So they dropped it down 25 pips back against the peak formation low without taking it out, jam them in, jam them in, pin hammer, Middle structure, engulfment, pin hammer, pin hammer for the move back towards the high of the day. We have geometry now from the high to the low. And this market has now worked up towards a second full expansion of that overall rectangle from Friday, Monday. Currently, we're up top. The market is working the high, working the high, working the high in our Asian 12 candle window. They may extend this move out, so we've taken out the previous day's high, but you'll notice that this market did not pull back. It just continued the move, so we may get a peak formation somewhere up in this Asian 12 candle session or in the second three-hour window for a move back down, possibly to 26.50. Stop hunting on the breakout of the U.S. 12 candle window for a continuation of this move up. If this market was to continue to move higher, we could see three peaks form for a move back down 25 to 50 pips. So again, each day, when we look at our 12 candle window, the market will give us a high and a low. An example of a low volatility day, we're trading inside the previous day's range on the Thursday before it eventually took out the previous day's low, but stayed tight, but then they eventually start working one side, they drop it down. They work the low again, they pull it back and work the high of the eight, the um, Europe London 12 candle window before going back into consolidation. Just mark this off. And then working the low, working the low, engulfment, pin hammer for the move back towards the high of the day. Now again, this is uh, towards the end of the US session, but stick to the basics. High and low, let them work one side or the other. If they start, if they extend the range out and they start working the high or working the low, we need a middle structure. We want to see engulfment, pin hammer. If it breaks out and pulls back for a trend trade, we'll see a one, two, three against the trend. But eventually they'll start working one side or the other to pull it back into consolidation or reverse the trade and head back towards the opposite extreme or the opposite peak formation. So keep it simple, traders. Asia high, low. Geometry, timings, round numbers, engulfments, and pin hammers. Have a great trading session, and may the markets go Hi, with traders. You. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.